Good morning, everyone. This is Lori Flickinger coming to you live from Lori's Wellness Loft. And for those of you who are joining me for the first time, I am a health and life coach. And my goal is to come on daily to give you little coaching gems that you can start applying right away to live a happier, healthier life. So thank you all for joining me this morning. I'm gonna give everybody a couple minutes to hop on. Um, this topic came to me today for two reasons. One reason being I am raising two teenage children right now. And the second is because I realized, good morning, Tori, are you raising teenagers right now? Because if not, get ready. It, it's, it's a roller coaster ride. I was watching a show last night that was, it was a, um, it was a drama, but it was talking about the difference between raising your, you know, your toddlers and your, you know, elementary school students. And then once they hit middle school, it's like all of a sudden they are completely different people. So uh, most of the people that I coach are parents as well. And in the coaching room, inadvertently, it always turns up, we start talking about children. So I wanted to try to give some helpful advice today for those of you that are struggling with raising teenage children. So number one, what you want to know is they are just as confused as you are. So if you're able to look at the situation with a little more compassion and understanding as to how unfamiliar this transition in their life feels to them as well. They're going through all kinds of, of hormonal changes. They're going through all kinds of life changes. And also, I want to talk to you about the brain, uh, primarily the prefrontal cortex. Hello, Juan. How are you? So when you become a teenager, you actually ha have more neurons in your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that controls decision making. So if you notice, if you have teen children, how they're just all over the board and you just never really know which kid's gonna walk through the door. So it's very challenging for them. They say raising a teen is almost like disciplining your dog. Within like five minutes, it's already over. Linda, we're talking about teens here. I'm glad you're on about how to raise teenagers that hate you. Um, and you're not alone. I think most teenagers hate their parents 90% of the time. It's funny, I was getting ready to walk out the door this morning and my son came in. He had spent time with his father um, this week. And I said, great, I'm so glad that you're here, Joey. Tell me the most challenging part. Hello, Allison. Tell me the most challenging part about being a teenager. And he was like, you, mom, you're the most challenging part. It's you. And I'm like, no, Joey, honestly, come on. This is for a webinar I'm going to do today. Tell me what's the, you, mom, you, you're the most challenging part. Like down my throat, I'm the reason. And I understand it because we are looking at these people who we have seen grow up and we know their personality, we know their temperament, we know what their behavior's like, and all of a sudden puberty hits and it's a 360. These kids are like aliens to us. But what I was saying, Allison, before you came on, is they're like aliens to themselves too. So I wanna be able to give all of you mothers and fathers out there a little bit of advice that might help you through the teenage years, okay? So the first thing is being a little more compassionate, realizing that they're just as lost and confused as we are. And if you think back to when you were a teenager, it wasn't fun trying to figure out where you fit in in the world, trying to maneuver peer pressure and make decisions and become an adult. And you're pulling away from your family and you're pulling away from your parents and the people who were telling you how to do everything all of your formative years are now not there and you're left to make these decisions for yourself okay and teenagers are very bad at decision making because their prefrontal cortex is not developed fully and they aren't able to rationalize all the time second thing with the teenage brain that you want to know is that a lot of times they have a difficult time skipping back and forth between emotional and logical thinking. Prime example, 
Last night, Allie calls. She's 17. She drives herself now. She calls and says, Mom, since it's not a school night, can I come home later? Her weekend curfew is 11. During the school, uh, school week, it's eight o'clock. She has to be in the house. So I'm like, mm, it's still technically a school night. I said, I'll make a concession. Come, come home at 10. And she flips, why are you making me feel so bad? You don't trust me. I'm not a bad child. Like totally t Jekyll and Hyde. Like, and, and she couldn't understand. That was a situation where a logical response would have been more practical than an emotional response, but her brain was just bouncing back and forth. So I just said, you know what? Call your father. I love to call your father. So I heard the phone ring downstairs and Chris answered and he dealt with it. Hi, Laura, Laurie, uh, Shannon, we're talking about teens, raising teens. If anybody has any suggestions or tell me, what was your biggest issue raising your teens? Drop that in the comments below. The other thing I want to tell everybody, I don't like the point, um, but don't ask if you can't handle the truth. Your teenage children are going to tell you the truth most of the time, unless you have given them a reason not to be honest with you. So prime, here's an example. If Allie or Joey goes to a party and I say, oh, so tell me guys, was there alcohol at the party? And they tell me yes. If I punish them for being at a party where there was alcohol, they're never going to trust me again. Our relationship has been, there's no trust there. So don't ask the question. Number two, this is what I tell people. Don't ask the question if you don't want the honest answer. So a lot of times they're going to give you the truth until you give them a reason to lie to you. Anybody agree with that? Give me some thumbs up if you agree. Don't ask if you don't want to know, okay? Here's one I love, and this is something I learned when I was in um, health coaching school. And think about when they were babies, when they were fussy or they were agitated. Prime example, Joey came in this morning like a bear, okay? I have to ask myself these three questions, and these are not just for children, they're for yourself and for any other people in your life. When people are acting agitated or out of sorts, you wanna ask yourself, when is the last time you ate? When is the last time you slept? And when is the last time you've pooped? Because believe it or not, these three things are very important to how you behave in life and how you act. So Joey came in like a wild man this morning. And of course I agitated him with, by asking him, what is the biggest struggle about being a teen? Um, but then I realized he was hungry. It was like 10.30, he hadn't eaten anything yet. So I said, Joey, I'm going to sit down and have breakfast before I go to work. Do you want me to make you some eggs? Oh yeah, Ma, that'd be great. And it was almost like the Snicker commercial. Like he was a bear. He ate his breakfast and then all of a sudden he sat with me and we talked and he was back to being the, his old self again. But again, asking yourself and asking um, your teen not in these words, but like, you know, I think they may get a little pissed off if you asked the last time they pooped, but guess what? Constipation's not fun, makes you miserable. So what's the last time you've eaten, slept, pooped? That's a big one. If you grew up in an Italian family, you know these are important questions to ask. And lastly, don't give unsolicited advice or criticize expecting that to make the situation better. So when I am talking to the kids, I will ask questions and I will listen compassionately and I won't needle, but I kind of dance around the subject. Okay. So I let them tell me now, if they want advice, I will say, would you like my advice or would you like my help on this? If they say no, I don't give them advice because a lot of times, you know, you as a person, call your best friend, call your mother, call your husband. You just want a sounding board. You don't want them to fix anything. You just want to sound off, get it out, and then you feel better. Okay. Then when they give you this information, you never want to take it around and use it to criticize them or to judge them or to attack them because they just bared their soul to you. 
okay? And you want to be able to, you want boundaries, you're a parent, you're setting the guidelines as to what is expected, and they know what you expect. But you also want to be compassionate and let them know you're there because sometimes they just need you to listen. So if this was helpful, please drop me a one in the comments below. If I lost you and you didn't like my advice on how to have your team not hate you, drop me a two in the comments below. And if you are interested in coaching with me, please give me a call today. I am doing little free coaching blitz calls where they're little short calls. Hello, Jen, you missed it. I've talked about teens and why they're crazy. You can go back to my, um, my story. If you want to watch this, I'm actually going to share it to my story afterwards. And I've been uploading all of these stories to YouTube so that you can watch them all later. There's a bevy, a bevy of videos there for you to watch. Lastly, I ask a favor. If this was of value to you, please hit that little share button in the corner of your phone and share this on your timeline so that you can expose me to your friends and loved ones as well. So hope you're having a fabulous Thursday and I will talk to you soon.